Hey kids and welcome to Solution Stoic. So this is the last type of stoichiometry that you need to know uh, for Chem 20. The, this so Solution Stoic you actually need to know for uh, Chem 30. It's the only Stoic-ish that you need to know for Chem 30. So what is Solution Stoichiometry? The majority of work in research and industry involves solutions. Recall that solutions are easy to handle and are e uh, usually easier to control in reactions. The major difference compared to gravimetric and gas stoic is that we use molar concentration. So moles per liter, has, volume has to be in liters, has to be in liters, as a conversion factor rather than molar mass or molar volume. Well, like, let me just re retract. If you have two volumes, you don't have to convert. But if you only have one volume, you have to convert to liters. Uh, but I'll show you that with examples. Solution stoichiometry is the procedure for calculating the, mo uh, the molar concentration or the volume of solution products or reactants. Okay, we use molar concentration as a conversion factor rather than molar mass or molar volume. So we're not looking at molar mass. We did that already. It's done. We're not looking at molar volume. We've done that already. We're just going to use molar concentration, moles per liter. What that means is that concentration can be expressed in two ways. Moles over liters or liters over moles depending on what you want to cancel out so that's it for the theory not a lot of theory let's take a look at an example now here's the thing you're only you're going to use solution stoic to either a find concentration or volume that's it concentration or volume in the products end or you're given concentration or volume in the reactants end to find uh, mass that kind of thing so here's an example. Ammonia and phosphoric acid solutions are used to produce ammonium hydrogen phosphate fertilizer. What volume, so we're looking for the volume, so what volume of 14.8 moles per liter of ammonia is needed to react with 1 kiloliter of 12.9 moles per liter of the phosphoric acid? Now here, when you have kiloliters, you can want to do one of two things. You can either keep the kilo there, just know that at the end your last answer is going to have the kilo part of the kiloliters, or you can convert to liters and not have to worry about it. The first example, I'm not going to convert just to show you what happens. So there's my equation, my balanced equation. For a balanced equation that's difficult, I'll, I'll provide it for you. For those that I think you could do, you're on your own, okay? So I'm going to populate. I'm looking for the volume of ammonia. I have the concentration of ammonia, right? So that's my C. My concentration, oops. My concentration is equal to 14.8 moles per liter, and I'm looking for my volume. Uh, for my phosphoric acid, I have my volume of 1.00 kiloliters, and I have my concentration at 12.9 moles per liter. I have to start with this info, kiddos, because it's what I have. I'm looking for here, so what am I going to do with that? Nothing, not to start with. I have to start with this, and I always start with the unit that's the simplest, so the one unit. So here I have my 1.00 kiloliters. Notice if I leave my kiloliters here, it's going to show up in the uh, pro as, as the answer. This doesn't go away, kiddos, just because you don't convert. Or you can convert from the beginning. It's totally fine. So I want to cancel out my volume. So I can say 12.9 moles per liter, or I can say 1 liter has 12.9 moles. I want to cancel out liters, so of course I'm going to use this. Okay, My liters cancel out. Now I have my, my, uh, molar, my molar ratio. This is what I have, which is a 1. That's right there. And this is the molar ratio for what I'm looking for, because I'm looking for the volume of ammonia. So now what I need to do is I need to use my concentration, but this time I want to cancel out my moles. So I don't use 14.8 moles per liter. I use it. I convert it, and I change it, as because I can, because it's a conversion factor. The liter goes on top, and the moles go on the bottom, so that my moles cancel out. These moles cancel out, and I get my answer in liters. Now, depending on the question, I'm, you may keep it at kiloliters, or I may ask you to convert it to liters. So here's an example of how to find volume. Now, our next example is how to find concentration. In an experiment, a 10 milliliter sample, so here's a volume, of sulfuric acid solution, solution reacts completely with 15.9 uh, milliliters of 0.150 moles per liter potassium hydroxide. 
Calculate the amount concentration. Amount concentration just means moles per liter, right? Amount concentration or molar concentration is the same thing. It has to be moles per liter of the sulfuric acid. Now, notice these two volumes. They're both in milliliters. I w in this case here, I don't need to convert because they're going to cancel out. So I have my balanced equation. I'm going to populate my equation. I am looking for the concentration of the sulfuric acid. And I have the volume and I have the concentration for the potassium hydroxide. It's a 2 to 1 ratio. Take a look. This volume here is in milliliters. This volume here is in milliliters. Cool. I don't have to change it because they're going to cancel out. So let's start. I'm starting with this stuff because I have everything I need to get to moles of potassium hydrox uh, hydroxide. Then I can go for moles of potassium hydroxide, use my molar ratio to get to moles of sulfuric acid, and then find my concentration. So here I have, notice I have my milliliters here, and I have my milliliters here on the bottom, and this is on the numerator, denominator. They're going to cancel out. That's why I don't need to change them. I still, though, need to use this form of the conversion factor so that my volume cancels out. And here's my molar ratio of what I have. And this is what I need, right? Because I need to find my concentration. That's where the 1 came from. And this is what I have, and that's where the two came from. Now, here's where it gets, this is the only thing that you need to keep in mind. Now, notice that the mill, I'll do this in a different color. Notice that the milliliters have canceled out. So I'm generally here, this doesn't cancel until later. I'm left with my liters here, and these moles cancel out. So I'm left with my moles, and I'm left with my liters here. I have to make sure that my moles goes over, okay? And I don't want to uh, cancel out my liters or anything like that. That's why it's one over my, my volume, because I want to make sure that my moles go over. Now, if that confuses your brain, that's okay. At this point here, just get to moles of the KOH, and then take those moles and this divided by your volume. The only thing you have to make sure is that if you do it this way, the C is equal to N over V, you have to convert both of these to liters so that it, it, it keeps it the same. All right? And you get an answer of 0 0.119 moles per liter. So let's summarize. Uh, in order to do any of the stoic, you have to write a balanced chemical equation and list the quantities and conversion factors for the given substances and the one to be calculated. Convert the given measurements to its chemical amount, that's number of moles, using the appropriate conversion factor. Calculate the amount of other substances using the molar ratio from the balanced chemical equation. And convert the calculated chemical amount to find the quantity requested using the appropriate conversion factor. And remember to use ideal gas law for all gases, not STP or SATP. So now we're done with any stoichiometry. We can go from mass to moles to mass, volume, temperature, pressure, concentration, or volume, and vice versa. This is new. We've added the concentration of volume. You know how to do everything else. Okay, have a nice day, kiddos. And there will be practice and a key posted.